we've muted mm. on this end. Hello everyone, welcome to episode 2 of New Normal. My name is Brian and I'm from A1. So, um, in this episode or in this Facebook live session, what we're going to cover today is basically a transformation for your education business. So, this session here today will be very much suitable for business owner who owns uh, tuition centers, kindergartens, music schools, swim school, martial arts schools. This session will be perfect for you. It will also be good for your teachers because today is the day that we will be speaking to our guest speaker who has uh, accepted our invitation to be on our show today where you can learn um, three topics that we will cover. First one, we're going to talk about how you can regain back your students after the MCO lockdown. Our second topic today, we're also going to talk about how you can increase and eventually double the number of students that you have. And finally, thirdly, we're also going to cover what is the best way for you or for teachers to present online in a professional manner. So. Um, if this is your first time joining us today, uh, once again, I'd like to request for your help to share and also to invite your friends to join this session here today. All right. So, uh, once again, welcome to our show today and we are going to start soon. So I uh, just like to cover again, please invite your friends and also your coworkers for them to join in this beneficial talk today. 
So this is episode 2 of the new normal series. We have done episode 1 about 2 weeks ago. We, we've done it with um, Musicpreneur Malaysia where we actually have um, a support session on the experience of running a music school. All right, so we are going to start our session today. So once again, for those of you who have just joined us uh, this evening, my name is Brian, I'm from A1. For those of you who do not know who or what we do, our company A1, we actually provide management system for learning centers such as tuition centers and kindergartens. At the same time, we also have a marketplace uh, for all offline and online lessons. In today's episode two, of transforming your educational business, we will be covering three topics, which are number one, how we can regain back your students after lockdown. So we have been in MCO, RMCO for the past three months, and this is where we can see that most students have already dropped out or they have stopped coming to our center. And as you know, today is the first day that uh, we are actually allowed to reopen back all of our centers. And so the, I think the number one question that we've always gotten from our clients and also from business owners is how can we actually regain back our students? Number two, we we'll eventually want to increase and double up the number of our students in the time coming. And finally, number three, what is the best way to carry out classes online through a virtual classroom and how can we carry it out in a most professional manner? So today we have with us um, a sales breakthrough coach who has touched over 120,000 lives across 18 cities. He is also a three times TEDx speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hand and give a virtual clap and welcome to Mr. Wesley Chan. Hello, Mr. Wesley, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Thank you so much, Brian, for having me here. Hi, nice, Mr. Wesley. How are you doing this evening? Uh, doing good and excited for this show. <laughs> All right. All right. So, Mr. Wesley, so before we just start today's session, um, can yeah. you just tell us or uh, what you do and what is your background? All right. Uh, so one more time, thanks, uh, Brian, for having me on this show and uh, for the rest of you watching this right now. So thank you so much for your time. And it's 8.33 right now. And uh, yeah, so despite being in the evening after your dinner and you are here. So thank you so much for that. So my name is Wesley Chan. I have been doing training in the area of sales and persuasion for the past nine years uh, and travel across different cities and have trained more than 120,000 people as of now. So I'm very passionate in sales and persuasion and running businesses and all. So yeah, so um, so just a disclaimer. So even though that, you know, you're Brian, sales breakthrough coach. Uh, so I'm still learning along the way. So whatever I will be sharing with you on the show here today, uh, based on my experiences working with different clients from different industries. And I hope that this will be very useful for people out there. I know that your music centers, education centers, enrichment centers, even martial arts, right? Uh, talking about martial art, uh, I'm a big fan of martial arts. Uh, probably later I can share you some of my stories. Thanks, Brian. All right. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have joined us here today, um, just, just joining this live session. So, the reason why we're actually hosting this session and we have invited Mr. Wesley for us here tonight is um, we have actually done a very simple survey. In this whole three months, this period of three months, we've seen a 30 to 70 percent drop out of students. So, this is number one because probably some centers they do not run online classes. And for those centers who actually do run online classes, some parents feel that probably it's too much screen time for their children, their children are too young. And now since it's the reopening that we're back, we're allowed to reopen our learning centers, um, we need a guideline or at least a way of how we can actually persuade parents and also re, uh, regain their trust on, yes, I have done sanitization to my centers. It is safe. We're following all SOP and guidelines set out by the government. So um, this is why we've invited Mr. Wesley here once again to actually reduce the friction between center owners, business owners, and also parents. So Mr. Wesley, could you just share with us, what do you think in your, uh, in your experience, what's the best way that we can create this trust and also convince parents for them to send their students back to the centers. All right, so uh, you, you, you posted a very interesting um, survey that you talk about dropout rate of 30 or 70%, uh, which is unfortunate. And um, so stats like this um, are not just specific to education industry. So I've got clients across different industries uh, who somehow experience uh, same, more or less, some less or more of kind of drop. 
Now, so I have a deep, I have uh, a few different perspectives looking at this. Number one, in regards to the numbers that we have, okay, we don't we know that they are drop numbers. Having said that, there are still uh, some students who are very keen to continue to embark on this journey. So my invitation to all of us here, number one, of course, those drop out. There are different strategies, but how can we appreciate and leverage on our current students who are still very supportive, still wanting to learn? Let's not ignore them. Because at the end of the day, one of the best ways for us to promote our businesses is to use our existing happy, satisfied customers for, uh, for them to be our best marketing arm. So therefore, look at our current existing stock as in those people that are still with us. So how can we give them better experience so that they can hey, tell your friends, uh, you know, hey, if people join through you, they get 10%, 5% and kind of stuff. So make them as your biggest fan in order for us to continue promoting our business. So, so that's one. Uh, number two, using that scenario. So these are some of the testimonials of people who are still continuously you know virtual sessions they'll be joining you're still teaching and also perhaps we could capture these testimonials these success stories and to use this to inspire other parents or other students as well and say hey you know what despite all this thing but these students managed to make it uh, so these are some of the students that you potentially could be inspired by and therefore we would like to welcome you back as uh, virtual learning is a different space so back to the question of how we can regain trust. So I was doing a few research here and there, and I came across there's like a tuition centers, education centers, which actually did this. So before they, okay, so now everybody go back to the center. So what they did was they took some time to video, uh, to take pictures of the sanitization process because visual is a very good social proof. Now, everybody will say, yeah, la, we, we follow our SOP and so, but however being said, people want social proof. So you could even document your, your sanitization process. What have you done? What did you place? Take picture of the classroom and say, hey, we are now ready with all the precautions and we would love to welcome all of you to come back. That's what you could do. Um, the second thing about what we can do is, of course, uh, my bias belief now, moving forward, of course, we can't have totally everybody transform from, okay, MCO, virtual now, everybody come back offline entirely. Yep. Now, what I would like people to think is to have us ready to be prepared both online and offline. So the reason said so because uh, now is a buyer's market. Buyer's market means buyer, buyer, right? Buyer's market means uh, our customers and consumers have choice. Um, if they want to take offline, they can take offline. They'll take online, they can take online. So I would like to think on asking ourselves on how can we adapt and pivot towards this new norm? How can we have certain concepts or certain touch points which are online and yet some could be offline? So we also want to see whether how is the market accepting this because all these things are like unprecedented and it's entirely right. new, never happened before. So I would like to think that how we can prepare ourselves both online and offline in order for us to adapt to the current change in the environment. So the next question is this. Okay, Wesley, coming online, right? So so you talk about screen time. And so I, I would like to think that if it's attractive enough, if it's engaging enough, if it's fun enough, informative yeah. enough, um, parents or kids will find value in virtual program. So therefore, I would like to think that virtual learning is an entirely new rule set in place. Um, I would like to invite people to embrace in this uncertainty. There are plenty of opportunities. And the reason why I say so is not just because, hey, Wesley, you say it's easy. Now, now I'm very grateful that during this opportunity, I okay, so before this, I was running a lot of sales program training for corporates or offline. Uh, MCO kicked in, so three, four months, have to stay at home and just do like this. Uh, yep. Also a little bit uncomfortable in between. And here's what I realized. Uh, when we turn virtual, there are plenty of opportunities. Convenience of time, students can come from everywhere. I could be sitting in PJ um, and training companies in Hong Kong, Australia, and India, and I can just be here. So there are a lot of beautiful stuff about virtual learning uh, to be that. So it's just a matter of us switching our mindset. Instead of seeing this as a threat, as, an, as a disaster, why not ask ourselves what are some opportunities that we can tap on in order for us to pivot the way moving forward? All right. Okay. Thank you so much. So, um, Mr. Wesley, you talked about visualization and how yeah. that will actually help in convincing parents 
yep. um, that they have done sanitization, for example, right? Yeah. So um, in terms of, let's say, running an online class, because like you've mentioned, you have done online presentation to yep. audience from across um, cities. So what is your explanation or how can you, what can you say to parents to convince them in terms of visualization or in terms of auditory, how they can actually, how business owners or how teachers can tell parents that, you know what, um, my, our center is already safe. Um, you can trust us. We have done this. This is the guidelines and we have followed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so very good perspective that you brought up. So now people learn through senses. Uh, we can see, we yeah. can listen, we can touch, and people have the people have the thinking, observation, uh, logical brain as well. So um, at the end of the day, whenever you want to communicate, whenever you want to teach, uh, let's talk about the first one that we address: virtual learning, right? Um, our main objective when we conduct virtual sessions like this is to try to engage engage as many senses as we could. Uh, the predominantly the VAK. Uh, VAK means visual auditory kinesthetic. So what are some ways to turn our lessons interactive, visually very engaging? Uh, you could have pictures, infographics, quizzes, which are like popping up here and there, uh, play cards, or some of the things that we could do. Okay, so all of you here are going to write down the answer and show to the camera, something like that, right? So people can, can, can play with us. So visual is very important. Um, as in, I know some teachers who use whiteboard, to use... Um, Correct. A4, some of you, you like take a camera. And so many ways to do it. So, so long, number one, it is visually engaging, visually interactive, and it's visually attractive. So that's point number one. Point number two, what I would like to invite all of us to think is that have a very clear auditory engagement. So what do I mean by that? Number one, of course, a definite thing that we must have is very clear audio device. And uh, we are all very blessed because um, right now, the, one of the best audio capturing devices is our earphone. Uh, most phones have this. So if you just put on this, it already cancels a lot of background noise. Having said that, I would definitely invite um, educators here when you want to do a virtual session to make sure that it's away from distraction. You don't want to talk halfway, suddenly, like, you know, door knocking and uh, people call out your name. You know, it may not be nice. It's, it's, it's distracting yeah. for auditory people. So that's one. Number two, what I would also like to invite um, all of us to do is that whenever we do virtual sessions, uh, keep it as interactive as we can. So what do I mean? Now, my bias experience, um, try to keep your session in the span of one hour, half, and that's based on my bias experience with adults. Uh, maybe some of you here with kids, you may even shorten the time to one hour, one hour 15. Now, so, and I also recommend in between your lessons, you may want to interact with your audience using auditory senses, which means, okay, so now can I have um, Brian, would you mind to just um, turn on your mic and I want you to share with me right now, what is your answer? Something like that, right? Yeah. So then people can actually unmute, they can talk. Now, and I find this effective because the rest of the student will be like, oh my God, teacher's calling out name, right? So I better make sure I got to do. So you put them in an alert sense as well. That's one. Now, the third one is called a kinesthetic element. Um, kinesthetic element is uh, feeling and doing, all right? Feeling and doing. So maybe like do, show in front, or, you know, you could uh, have a little bit of uh, videos, you know, triggers and the happy emotion. So these are some things that the VAK um, that we could do and implement. And yep, it's just to engage as many senses as we can as in regards of teaching people. Having said that, I do note that virtual sessions may not be entirely the same as live because live people can touch, hit, slap. Okay, not slap, right? People can see the touch, right? Especially I know music entrepreneurs out there because when you talk about educating kids, sometimes you may need to have a little bit of contact, you know, what to press and what to click. And so, um, so these are just some restrictions to handle. The next point that you asked me was, okay, how could we use the VAK element to convince parents? Um, so at the end of the day, what you could do is you could prepare video format. You can do videos on your document, your video on how you sanitize. You can do infographics. Um, you can appear video of the maybe the, the, the teacher or the owner talking and say, hey, welcome parents. So auditory as well. Um, kinesthetic, a uh, little bit, okay, unless you're very good in producing stories to trigger emotion, then yes, you can. Else, infographics, um, document your videos and all uh, pictures would be good enough to convince people because uh, talking is cheap, but people want to see social proof. Yeah. I understand. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Wesley. So, we have um, just one of the points that you've brought up. 
uh, which was on auditory. So you mm-hmm. mentioned that um, you, um, probably a headset or a headphones that we're using is already sufficient enough for us to conduct mm-hmm. online classes. And yep. at the same time, um, most laptops already come with a webcam, right? And yep. it's not, it's not uh, that expensive to actually get an external webcam if to improve the media quality. Correct. Right. I think the problem here is mostly comes in the beginning. So when uh, MCO was just announced for two weeks, right? The first MCO that was announced, I think most learning centers find the a difficulty for them to switch from offline to online. Mm. Uh, probably in the first phase of MCO, probably they would wait it out, right? They'll say, okay, you know what? We still can sustain if it's just two weeks. And then the government extend it for another two weeks, then another two weeks, and then another four weeks. So this is where suddenly um, their mindset has no choice for both parents and also for both um, learning centers. So on the parents' end, at first, you know what? Two weeks, um, I do not want to join the online classes. But then after that, they will see that, okay, you know what? I think education must continue despite whatever the problem is. So number one, schools, even schools, now all the schools are doing online learning. And then you have learning centers who has done the same as well. Okay, but what you've mentioned earlier was that your um, suggestion is that moving forward, after the reopening of offline and physical classes, you would actually recommend learning centers to run both offline classes and online classes. Okay, um, can you elaborate on that? Why do you think so? Why, why do you think that um, a blend of offline and online is the way to go? And why shouldn't learning centers just revert back to offline? All right, so so that's a very good question. Uh, why don't we go revert entirely to 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 offline? Now, of course, classes can still remain offline as usual as what we have done. Now, the reason why I would like to invite people to consider online is because now parents and kids have already oh, it is actually possible for us to take up classes during this time. Uh, it's actually possible to learn stuff, uh, learn things, you know, remotely. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I think just in general, um, I think what MCO has done is that it has actually pushed uh, some of us or most of us to try things that we think that it's not possible. So I'll yep. give you a, a very good example. Uh, myself, before this, I never ordered um, delivery, food delivery, right? I've never used grab food or food panda, but because of this MCO, after you get tired of cooking, eating Maggie every day, so you start ordering uh, grab food. So I think this is something similar that we've seen in uh, our community as well, where at first parents say, um, I do not really trust online teaching. I don't really trust online learning. My child um, doesn't know how to operate this computer or using the platform that you are using. But after that, because it's no more a choice, it becomes that's the only option. Um, then suddenly it says, oh, okay, you know what? I think my child can actually do this too. So moving forward, um, you're saying that it's actually good for learning centers to run both offline and online. Yeah, uh, so, so that's, that, that's my thought. So the reason why I would encourage um, online is because like what you say is very true. I mean, those days pre-MCO, uh, people always think, yeah, you know, we should do online to create awareness. But the interesting part about doing MCO, uh, it is no longer about awareness. People already know right. they should go online. <laughs> it's just yeah. how, what platform, when, what time, right? So, so yeah, so having said that, uh, so it will be a good, option for people i'm not saying that we entirely go online or entirely go mm-hmm. offline so it's good to open options for people to decide uh so and let me tell you what i love about online because it's about accessibility ease of time ease of convenience you know we are talking even you could have a you could be an tuition center owner enrichment center music academy in let's say in kl now somebody watch your facebook live or somebody go through your promoting your marketing materials could be from kk uh could be from different countries i don't know right Let's say if it's a music, it could be from different different countries, nation. If you're talking about the same syllabus, it could be built from somebody from different cities that we could. So it opens up an opportunity that we could explore. So so it's interesting because I've experienced this. Uh, so at first during MCO, okay, lah, have to do virtual because no choice cannot meet clients face-to-face. Yeah. And I decided to embark on this. And you'll be surprised when you see registration list coming, right? You will see people from different cities, different parts of the world that enroll into your program from different time zone. And I find that, hey, we have all been talking about online, but it's actually possible to have people watching this from different parts of the nation, which I find it is a good opportunity for awareness. Now, here is what I would like people to think. 
So why not if we could package in a way that maybe the online classes are like maybe the shorter version or the simpler version. If they want to know more, they can go for the offline classes. Uh, so for those of you here, it's called marketing funnel. So because online has a power of reach, it's about reaching people, right? Offline has a power of touch, which means they get to see the teacher, get a touch, okay, not touch, but get to feel you, right? So both have their own uniqueness and points. So therefore, there's a the reason why I would like to think that it would be a good strategy to explore. So there's both the online and the offline. Online can replay, online can be accessible over time. So it could be e-learning, it could be live training, um, it could be many ways. So therefore, I would like to think that this could be an opportunity for us um, to tap into this seamless technology. All right. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Wesley, for your uh, opinion. So, uh, uh, Brian, I lost you a bit. Uh, I can't hear you. Yeah. All right. Are you able to hear me now? Yes. All right. So I think before this, um, before MCO, you have been running mostly, or I can say 100% all offline sessions, right? So you, what your background is, uh, you've been doing sales uh, and also coaching for different industries. Yeah. So, and what I've seen, because I follow you on social media, for uh, yeah. our viewers and audience tonight, if you do not follow uh, Wesley Chan yet, you can actually follow him on Facebook. He posts amazing contents that is both for sales, persuasion, and also motivation. So I've, I've actually seen like a very good uh, content that you actually put out, right? Um, that actually talks about how you can present better online. Because like you've mentioned earlier today in the session, you are still also on a learning journey where you're yep. also um, tuning its trial and error, seeing what is good, seeing what is uh, what you can do to optimize every virtual session. Right. Yep. So could you share with us your journey from 100% offline, from training all of your um, individuals, all the way now to doing 100% online? <laughs> okay, so that's a, that's a very good question to ask. And, and that's the reason why perhaps uh, it's a very good question to follow up based on what I say. A lot of people say, oh, Wesley, you say it's easy to turn virtual, but what is your experience like? Um, so let me share with you my experience. Um, I still remember my very first virtual session was okay. a company from Penang because already scheduled offline and they say, Wesley, since we booked your time and people are waiting for the session, so why not return everything from offline to online? The interesting part is this, still so the offline workshop was three hours. So they flew me to Penang okay. to do a three hours and then I come back, supposed to fly me, right? They say, okay, can we do the same thing for online? Then I asked, how long? Three hours. I'm like, okay, let's go and do it, right? <laughs> and it's three hours of virtual session, right? For how a group of- participants were scheduled to come at that time? 15 to 20. These are like the wow, managers okay. and senior managers from different different uh, companies in Penang. So like, okay la, I do la. <laughs> then I say it's my first time and they say, yeah, it's also their first time. So, and then we, we, we conducted a session and um, it turned out to be okay. Uh, so the interesting part was the lesson learned was it was very long because it was three hours, right? It was very long, three hours. There was a break in between, a 15, uh, 15 minutes break in between. But still, uh, it is very exhausting for the learners. It's because you can look at the screen for like two hours, 45 minutes. Um, so it's a bit too long. So lesson learned, uh, my take is sweet spot is one and a half hours, maximum uh, two hours for adults. For right. kids, I would like to think maximum one and a half hours. So this is my very first. Um, so after that, just, um, yeah, sorry, yeah. I think just to share with, with um, our audience here today as well. So we have a community of uh, business owners who is in the education industry and what they have shared is also something similar. So normally most of their classes for, um, for example, STEM, like uh, science, technology and mathematics, most yeah. of these learning centers, they're running classes from an hour to an hour and a half. So actually this is um, okay. It is suitable for students who are much older. So for example, 10 years old and above. But yep. for younger students, what they have done is that they've actually break uh, those classes into two separate sessions. So each class now becomes, for example, 45 minutes long. And instead of a class of, let's say 20 students, they have done it into for a smaller group. So like you've mentioned earlier in the session, it, uh, it actually increases the uh, engagement and also interactivity between the teacher and also the students. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you got a good point. The participant size is one. Uh, another example that I can bring to you, uh, Brian, is um, 
So teaching is one. Tutorial can be one. It could be yeah. you do teaching uh, for a huge group. After that, you follow up with a tutorial with the smaller groups. So teach, bring the assignment, then we guide to tutorial. It could also be done. Um, okay, so come back to experience. So, so in that part, that was my first three hours and uh, definitely a no-no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so along the way, uh, that was the first one that I've done. Then along the way, I tested a few things like um, background, lighting, you know, audio, video and all. So, and I evolved over time. And um, if I were to think back, so I actually counted back how many sessions I've done. I've conducted more than what, 70 virtual sessions, more than what, 70 live shows as well uh, for the yeah. past three to four months that time. So I would like to think that it's a very good uh, opportunity. It's a very good experience for me. And I will foresee doing this a lot more in the future. Now, the reason why being said so is because it's a lot easier for us to do follow-up or continuity or sustainability, right? So like, for example, I can do like a two hours workshop. Uh, then I can follow up with 45 minutes tutorial, 45 minutes tutorial, 45 minutes tutorial. So it is easier because people don't have to travel all the way because they can still tune in from their office, tune in for wherever they are. And they can still tune in for a very quick 45 minutes on Q&A itself, application reflections. Um, so there are many ways for us to actually do so. So, yep. So that was my very biased experience and it's, it's, a, it's a good way. I, I'm glad I managed to pivot uh, and I'm very grateful yeah. to be doing so. So yeah, I would like people to actually explore on this path too. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Wesley. So for those of us who have just joined um, in tonight's Facebook session, we will have, we'll do a quick um, Q&A session at the end of tonight's Facebook Live. So if you have any questions, you can just feel free to comment down below and we'll try our best to answer um, your questions. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So uh, let's continue on. Um, so one thing I've, I've noticed in your social media is actually when, because I'm um, just a brief background for those of you uh, who just joined us, I've actually attended Mr. Wesley's training and also his previous both because offline I'm and also online. So what I've seen and what I've noticed is that the energy level, the level of energy that he brings both for offline and online is exactly the same. Um, I think for most of the teachers here, one of the problems they're struggling when they're actually doing online classes is that um, because when you do offline classes, if you teach students, um, you can interact with them, you can tell by their facial expression, oh, the um, student does not know how to do this question, right? And yep. you can bring a certain level of energy, so you can start the class with great energy and great motivation. So when yep. we shift to online, when teachers shift to online, suddenly that becomes a problem, right? Uh, I think I've talked to you about this as well. Some <laughs> students probably, they, they don't feel comfortable to turn on their camera. Some yes. even to a point where they don't want to own their microphone and the only yep. way to communicate is via chat. Yep. So one thing I've noticed from your social media is that the videos that you put out and also the yeah. live sessions that you carry out, you seem to have this great amount of energy that actually would spark even to increase the energy in all of the participants. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we lost you a bit, Brian. Yeah, uh, you, you talk about energy part that I lost you for the last few words. You are muted. You are muted, Brian. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about energy. How do I sustain and raise the energy? Oh, okay. All right. So uh, <laughs> that's a very good question. Uh, okay. So now, okay. So as, as I was actually browsing, right, um, Heidi Chan is here. Uh, hi. Hi, Heidi. Uh, Heidi is watching this. Heidi asked a question. What is the brand that Wesley is using? So sharp. Uh, Heidi, <laughs> uh, I'm not using a webcam. As you could see, right, uh, this is my laptop. Uh, I'm not using a webcam. I'm actually using a camera. So I have got a, a Sony Sony camera right there. So I connect yeah. this using something called as a capture card and I convert this to become like a webcam. Uh, if you want to know how to configure, so reach out to me, I can tell you how to do so. Um, the reason why I did this is because um, I conduct many sessions and video quality is one of the key criteria in virtual sessions because you want to look clear so that people will be more pleasant and more comfortable. Like, it's like seeing you yeah. HD. 
to people like that. So uh, so I use a mirrorless camera, or you can even use a DSLR. Use a capture card, then convert to your laptop. Boom, here you go, right? So then you can use whiteboard. You can write. You can still be very clear. So that's one. Now uh, another thing is that how do we continue the energy? Uh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Um, I I think I think it's not just the energy, right? So there are many things that could lead to energy being projected to to the audience, right? So I have this formula called laser. That's L-A-S-E-R. So perhaps Barry can write this down. So L-A-S-E-R. So what does L-A-S-E-R stands for? Now, the first L is called lighting. Now, for you to give good energy you know, to your audience or students watching this, so one of the first key criteria is the lighting of your video. So uh, the rule of thumb is, so make sure that a source of light is in front of you. So what happened is that right now, if you couldn't see, okay, you can't see because I'm in this frame. So my left and right 45 degree, I have those selfie ring light and the light is shining on my face so that you can focus on my face. You can see my expressions. <laughs> All right. So uh, I got this selfie ring light, uh, Lazada, Shopee, like what, 50 to 70 ringgit. Get two if you want. Get one is also good enough. So it shine on your face. Now, also another advice is that you want to put 45 degree on top. So it shine from above to down so that you look got shadow. Got shadow means female educators. You look prettier. <laughs> <laughs> so shadow means you look more 3D. Lah. That's, that's, that's the thing. So left and right, uh, 45 degree from the up, shine down. So lighting is that. Background, make sure there's no distraction. Uh, no people walking past, no door, no TV, nothing at all. So that's my background behind. Uh, okay, so if you say, how come so sharp, right? Because you're using a camera. That's why I got a yeah. blur effect, all right? So even if I want to play with it, I got a light, I got a lamp behind. Okay, let's not go so detailed about it. So that's L, <laughs> lighting. A is audio, which is our, oh, sorry. A is angle, not audio. A is angle. So a very good way to position our camera is to make sure that our camera is eye level. The reason said so is because you want people to feel as if they are watching you as real as we can. Now, I highly recommend you to be eye level. So for those teachers out there, if you are using your webcam, I would highly recommend you to put like a tissue box or something below so that you can elevate your laptop. It becomes eye level. Then it okay. becomes more real. Reason said so, if, um, if it's too high up, uh, you look like you are going for vacation, it's like those selfie vlog video. You put two down, you are looking at people like this, um, not so pleasant, and people can see a double chin also. Also, shout out for female teachers. <laughs> so, again, so eye level is that. Uh, third one is sound. Uh, uh, using this, earphone, earpiece is definitely a lot better than using your laptop because your laptop audio device is good, but it's very burst. It's, like, it's very echo, which is very burst. Um, next is called E, L-A-S-E, it's called energy. Um, the reason why you still see me in this uh, energy mode is because now my experience is this. If you talk at 100%, the energy will only get transferred over to the video around 70%. So let me just repeat myself one more time. Let's say if I talk 100%, the energy that gets transferred is 70%. So for those of you here who are going to do a lot of virtual sessions, I would highly recommend you to speak a little bit faster and a little bit more excited because if you are live with me if you're live with me right now you will say hey wesley how come you talk so different one uh but because now it's different because why you're watching through the lens so therefore so for those of you here who are going to teach through the camera you're going to be a little bit more excited and you're going to speak a little bit faster so i guess it's all about being very comfortable speaking to just a lens <laughs> because many people who do uh, many people who teach virtual sessions they end up looking at the face of the student and they're not looking yeah. at the camera so when you're teaching make sure that you have this eye contact to the camera so people feel as if you're still looking into the eyes so when you interact then you look down that's when you go straight so this energy part right so i guess it's about having fun getting comfortable about speaking to just a camera lens and the last tip is this. So L-A-S-E-R. R stands for real. Be the real you. It doesn't matter if our eyes go up a little bit, go down a little bit. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we talk sometimes, we got the mm and the ah. It's entirely fine because your students will know how you talk. The last thing that you want, how come this teacher 
online so funny one right? <laughs> because people <laughs> can stranger across the screen <laughs> <laughs> because you must understand um content is one but people want the emotional connection people want the real you the real teacher the real tutor the real educator across the video so they want to be able to experience the real side of you so having said that it is entirely fine if you make some mistakes along the way it's okay don't punish yourself too hard right especially yeah. teachers i know sometimes you are quite a perfectionist but yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's entirely fine to embark on this journey so there's always continue so i will recommend that progression is always better than perfection have fun doing this and one of the things that i love about teaching online you can always record your video record students to understand they can rewatch entirely fine no problem with that do understand they can rewatch tutorial question they do understand they can rewatch as well so yep so there are some of the tips that for you to increase your energy because ultimately people attend your class is because they want to learn but what sells is your experience that you provide is the energy and the way you talk that make people resonate with you many teachers out there but why should they pick you is because you are real you're original you are being yourself so that's my take all right. Yeah, thank you so much. So for those of us who have just joined in tonight's session, uh, so Mr. Wesley was just sharing on how we can actually uh, present much better or can teach online in a more professional manner. So his tips was um, the acronym LASER. So L stands for lighting, where you should have uh, better lighting. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. So lighting from a 45 degree angle and lighting from the front. Yep. Right. Second one is also for angle. So we've talked about that. And third one is sound. So sound is way for your microphone. And you talked about energy. So what Mr. Wesley has actually mentioned earlier today was that the energy that translate from um, the presenter to the audience or from the teacher to the students is from 100% down to 70%. So what we should do here is to actually increase our energy so that they can actually um, incorporate or accept it much better. And finally, is to be real. All right, so thank you so much, Wesley. Um, so um, we would like to, um, yeah, so for those of us who just joined here, I can just share out this live session. And if you have any questions on how you can conduct, if you have any questions like how you can conduct your classes better or how you can actually talk to parents, you can always comment down and um, Wesley and I will try our best to answer in this session tonight. So um, now, I think just to simplify here, I think the number one or the overall general picture that we can get is on how we can regain our students and also increase the number of students is actually to provide extra value. Like what Wesley have mentioned earlier on, it, in today's market, it is now a buyer's market, right? Yeah. So parents have the options to choose which learning center that they want to send their children to. Um, so the power, the purchasing power is all in the parent's hand. So what differentiates your center with your competitors is the value that you bring. So what, what Wesley and I have been discussing tonight is that if you could actually have a blend of offline and online, this will actually increase um, the value that you can bring. So the points that we touched on was number one, if you do online classes, number one, parents, they do not need to send uh, their children at a time that they're not convenient, right? Sometimes I think for offline classes, when a learning center goes, okay, these are my available slots. And none of these slots uh, matches what uh, the parents can send. So if we actually carry out online classes, this would uh, eliminate this problem, right? Parents don't need to go through the jam. They don't need to find a driver. They, need, they don't need to pick up their children afterwards. Besides that, number two, with online classes as well, you can actually do recording. So the good part about here is that after the student has gone through the class, they, for example, they still do not understand, they can actually rewind the tab and they can actually watch again. And third one is that once you have actually record all of these online videos, this can be a collection. And this is an added value that instead of just, I think pre-MCO, what happens is let's say um, I want to send my child to a med center. So I send my child to the med center four times a month, once a week, and that's it right? And then probably you get some homework. But with the help of these online tools, you can record and this can be supplemented back to the parents and also the students. All right. So Mr. Wesley, just to recap things uh, before we'll end today's session here, 
Um, so once again, for any one of you in the audience, if you have any questions, feel free to comment down and we'll try our best to answer. So um, I think just to end this session here, the most important part for us now is that since the centers have just started reopening, I think the sentiment in the parents' market as well, in the parents' community, is that they feel like it might still be unsafe to send their children back to learning centers. Not only in learning centers, but in school as well. Uh, I think personally, I know a few parents and also even teachers who are parents that they still do not um, trust entirely that it is safe for, the, for them to send their children back. So um, just to recap what we have talked about earlier, what can you, let's say you are now an uh, education business owner, how, what would you say to parents via phone or WhatsApp? How can you convince and encourage them for them uh, to send their children back to the center? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, so, so Brian, uh, so as we could just take a few opportunities to engage with uh, some of the people sure. watching this. So now one is, uh, I got someone who asked me, uh, so, Nan, uh, <laughs> um, if we conduct online training, how much do you think is a reasonable fee that we could charge? Because the assumption is right. that fee shouldn't be as much as face-to-face -face training. Uh, I would like to think this would be a good question. So, face-to-face, -face, of course, more expensive face-to-face. -face. Now, uh, a, a, a virtual session could be slightly cheaper compared to physical, okay. but the good thing is it depends on the learning journey. So, let's say physical, let's say, okay, let's put my case, let's put my case, right? Um, Physical one day training, field sales training, eight thousand ringgit a day. Now, if I conduct one virtual session for up to two hours, I charge three thousand ringgit for one session for twenty people. Now, so three thousand compared to eight thousand, it's like okay, uh, a much reduced fee. But the thing is that a learning journey have the possibility of more multiples. It's a series, right? right? You can do many more times. So it really depends on how you want to price your program. Uh, there's no right or wrong for this none. So the next question that I saw was from okay, Alice. Oh, Alice brought up a very good point. How can one center stand out from all thousands of centers throughout the country and even international? Yeah. Now, here's my take. See, uh, it is not just our product that makes us unique and different. I do note that there are different syllabuses that make you stand out. Like there's so many different right. syllabus or, or support or workbook. Now, having said that, the key right now on tapping into people's mind share is this idea called content marketing. So what's called content marketing, Alice, and also to Serene. Now, the thing is this. What can we do, especially in the online space, to continuously provide value for our customers? Okay, so let me just give more examples because since we're talking more about education businesses. Okay, so Brian, you brought up a very good point. You brought up like um, teachers, uh, sorry, parents, right? So yeah. parents have a concern on um, the kids' sanitization, whether they go to school safe or not, how to make sure they clean and things like that. So why not? As educators, can we leverage on the power of video on how we can record very short two to three minutes video on addressing what do parents want to know? So when I say this, we have to know the parents and our customers. What are some of their current problems that they're having right now? What yeah. are some of the issues they have right now? So for example, let's say, teachers, you can do a short two to three minutes and say things like, um, do you know that one of the highly, uh, one of the highest populated places for bacteria to grow is our pen? Hi, my name is Brian. I help students to, to then you introduce yourself. And one of the main challenges in a lot of parents is that you're not aware that actually pen has got a lot of bacteria and virus. So therefore, here in this video, I'm going to walk through with you three very simple strategies on how you can clean and sanitize your writing materials so that your kids will be safer in school. Step number one, step number two, step number three. So what I'm saying is that if you could turn all these contents into educational format, tips, yeah. strategies to share with people, like for example, three little tips to answer these questions, three little tips to do this multiplication, three little tips to pick up this, three little tips to pick up that, three steps, three strategies. If you could share all these mini, mini bite-sized strategies and tips, then people will watch and people will feel that, like, hey, teacher Alice, Different that. Other people talk about sales, but you know what? I can learn a lot from your sharing, teacher Alice. So when yeah. parents see that, students see that, what happened is that they have got more trust and credibility on you. Because why? You give. You share value. So hence, that is one of the reasons why we are not here to be the best. 
we are just here to be the ones that reach out to the customer market, to reach out to them and to provide the solution that they are looking for. Another good example, parents also worry, ma, hey, my kids never go to school, how, they, they, how can they pick up the learning attitude again? A teacher can do, okay, three simple ways that parents can help their kids <clears throat> to get started with learning mindset. Um, three little steps for parents to encourage their, stu- their kids to learn more. Three things you need to take note of when you go to school. Uh, it can be things like uh, three platforms that students can learn for free, something like that. So share all this content so that you're able to solve your customer's problem, establish trust, they like you more, at the same time, they see you more and they like you more. So this is my take. So video is very powerful, infographic articles share consistently so that people can learn from you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Wesley. I think that answers the question from Miss Alice and also from um, Serene. Right, um, so just to recap what you, uh, Wesley has mentioned here. So, so we can create content, right? So it's all content and marketing. I think most businesses, including education businesses, you will already have a Facebook page at the very least. We know some of our clients who actually have um, Instagram pages and also YouTube channels. Right, so from here, you can actually upload content. So for example, what Mr. Wesley has mentioned, um, three simple steps to do this, three strategies to do this, and this actually adds value, and this is how you can stand out from um, thousands of centers. Um, I'd like to add on to a point that you have mentioned earlier to answer the question regarding pricing, right? So yeah. I think um, usually the, the the normal mindset is that, from actually from parents' side, is that, oh, um, it's an online class, shouldn't it be cheaper? Because uh, now you don't need to print all of the worksheets, right? But I think in a way from what you have just shared with us, if we're actually able to provide more value and parents can actually see the value that what um, the teachers and also the centers are providing to their children, it will no longer be a matter, it will be no longer a conversation on about the pricing. It will be more on the value that, that you can bring and you can add to a student's uh, learning journey. Would you agree to that? Yes, uh, so correct. So price is an indication whether how much they're willing to pay for your value. Correct. So the more value you provide, the more that you can show people that you could deliver, that you're interactive, you show tips, then people will find it more okay. So it's more reasonable, I pay you this amount. You can demand higher premium, yeah. uh, you can have better engagement and they will have a certain trust and credibility. The reason I say correct. so, if you do a Facebook Live or let's say if you do like a, a content video, parents watch. If let's say they inquire you and meet you face to face, you know what will happen? Hey, I meet you before in your video. I watched before. It is very nice. Yeah. So then you'll be like, oh, oh, sorry, I don't know who you are. So it but becomes don't do that, like ah. you become like a celebrity. You become Correct. known in the industry. Uh, may not be a celebrity, but people yeah. have a certain emotional connection. And that is the power of online reach. They watch your video before, seen your article before, download your ePDF ebook before, your solution to certain math, science, question, right. chemistry, bio. Then if I, hey, I download before, then you're like, oh, oh, great. So it has got a very preliminary uh, touch that you can give towards the audience or your target market. And yep. like all these things, all these digital assets are like your marketing arm. And it's right. going to be there on your page. So it's a very good opportunity to create all this content. Now, I know some of you may say, hey, Wesley, what if I share? Huh? Then they don't come to my center, they just learn for free. Uh, you know what? Yeah. People will always want to crave more, right? Have the mindset of abundance, just share. Uh, because what if they download one book? They will learn, they will learn everything from you, right? But yeah. all these little snippets that you have, it establishes more trust. So then they when they pay, right? It's just they want to meet you in person and to have the feel about how you do and how you teach. So exactly. that's my take. Yeah. Yeah. So it will help with closing, especially when let's say, so I think what you have shared throughout this whole session is that with the content marketing, whatever we've posted out, it actually helps to build um, a center's marketing funnel. So from the top side, number one, you actually increase your brand awareness. So, yeah. and it establish a certain level of trust. And from there, I think uh, it, it becomes, you become, you or uh, the business owner becomes someone who can actually be known in, for example, let's say if you think of Mets, this is the person that you think of, this is the center. And when they see you personally, there's already a certain level of trust. So the business owner and the parent, they do not need to start from scratch to build that trust and that rapport anymore. Correct. So because you must understand market share comes after mind share. Capture the mind share, it will then lead to the market share. So that is content marketing.
Yeah. Yeah. I think for one more uh, struggle that we see most learning centers is also on the point of, um, like as you mentioned, progression over perfection. So normally we see learning centers, they, they actually take this advice and they go, okay, you know what? I'm going to start with content marketing. So they start doing Facebook Live or they'll start posting uh, daily on their social media. But then what happens is that they have really low engagement. There's very little likes. There's very little comments. Uh, if they're posting a video, no one watches their, their video. And then, so from there, they get quite discouraged. So yep. what would be your advice for uh, people who are on their journey in doing this marketing? All right. So my answer to this is most viewers are silent. Okay. <laughs> most viewers are silent. They don't like, they don't comment, but they just want to watch your video. So my take is uh, don't expect a one hit viral wonder. It's all about consistency. It's all about being continuously there to capture the mind share of your audience. So start with one, go with 10, go with 30, go with 50. Uh, and one of my friends actually said, you know what, for you to be considered visible, at least 30 to 50 videos consistently without expecting instant result. So most yeah. viewers are silent. So I can resonate with this. I post my videos on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Never see, never like, suddenly comment and say, hey, you know what? Can I ask you for a certain training? I'm like, okay, how do you watch my video? I'll be <laughs> following you, but just don't want to comment because yeah. I skipped the comment, you go and sell things to me. So, so, <laughs> so that's interesting perspective. Most, are, uh, most viewers are silent. That's one. Number two, uh, in terms of strategy, uh, you can post videos in groups, parenting groups, education groups. You can ask people to like, share, engage people video could be one you can do articles infographics um ebook epdf certain solution turn to pdf ask people download also can um, you can uh, record uh, some teachings three to five minutes and for those who want more then they can join your trial class or something like that uh, variety right. is key not only video there are so many ways so long as you create content what is called content content means you provide value what is called value things that you share that help to solve people's problem all right. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Wesley. So we're going to uh, recap and just conclude this session. So um, do you have any advice for our audience and viewers here this evening? Final words from Mr. Wesley. <laughs> Final words. Uh, so, so my take is um, I always love to speak with uh, fellow educators uh, uh, because educators are the ones who enable people to grow yeah. uh, and progress. So my take is um, during times like this, I know it could be a little bit challenging because of social distancing. And so having said that, people still need education. People Correct. still wanting to learn. People are still there dying for knowledge despite calendar being postponed. <laughs> but that's the <laughs> side. But there's still a need. A child's dream will remain a doctor, still being a doctor. He still need to pass SPM, still need to go to school, still need to pass through exams. So it is very relevant for fellow educators to be here in the market. The question is, the delivery, it is just different. So my take is that, always remember uh, that you are here to provide value to people. Now we're just thinking of how we can reach out to our target audience. If needed to explore different paths, so why not we go and explore and try? At the end of the day, almost every businesses right now, they're still in the exploring stage because it's a new norm. Uh, people are still finding where they fit. But my take is have fun trying, right? Have fun exploring and so. And the good thing about coming online, it doesn't always have to be expensive. You don't have to always invest in expensive gadgets, software. And so you could even start with even Facebook Live recording a video from your cell phone. It is already good enough. You got Microsoft Words, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint. It could be turned to PDF and it's at zero cost. We could all do so. Now, that is the new norm that I foresee there will be. Convenience, accessibility, whenever people want to consume material, whenever and wherever they want. So my last advice is have fun to embrace in this new norm. Don't resist change and uh, continuously be there for your target audience. One of the ways to know is that what are the things that you're doing? Is it all right or not? Have constant check-in with your target audience. Ask them what difficulty they have. What is their preference? If I'm going to start this session for half an hour, is it okay? Would you want to try? Get in touch with your target audience. Don't distance yourself from them. Keep in touch with the parents. Ask them what are the challenges they face in regards to the kids' education. What if I do this? Does it, does it all right for you? So because your market, your target audience will give you the answer. Because most of the time, we could be wrong. The yeah. market are the one who's going to pay. They would lead us to the answer. So keep in touch with them. Ask them. Keep in touch with them. Check out what they want to know, their preferences. Then you tweet and you pivot along the way. So have fun changing. 
and welcome to the new norm. All right, thank you so much, Wesley, for all of the input. And once again, thank you so much for um, joining us tonight in our Facebook session here. So um, just to wrap things up, thank you for Mr. Wesley for having uh, for coming on the show tonight where we talked about um, education business transformation and a few simple strategies that you as a business owner can apply to actually... Um, to actually transform your business and increase the number of students that you have. So just to recap, my name is Brian. We're from A1 and what we've actually do in our company is actually we provide management system for learning centers. So if you're running a tuition center or if you are running um, a, a kindergarten, tadika, swimming schools, we have a management system that can actually help with uh, fee collection. I think fee collection is the number one importance now because of MCO. So fee collection, you can broadcast uh, messages, parents can download e-receipts and also make payment through their mobile app. Um, so at the same time here, we're also a vendor under the government for the digitalization grant where you as a business owner, you can actually get a matching grant up to 5,000 ringgit per company. So for companies or for people who are actually interested, you can actually uh, visit our website at a1schools.com or you can also scan this QR code for a free demo of our software. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And a final shout out once again to Mr. Wesley. Uh, I think I've said multiple times throughout this session. If you are interested to know more about what Mr. Wesley do uh, before MCO, even now, you can actually check out his social media on Facebook and LinkedIn, Instagram, and also, uh, also on YouTube, right? So you can watch his previous videos. Um, he has shared amazing content and these are all for free. So from um, building rapport with your targeted customers and also uh, motivational strategies. So once again, thank you so much, Mr. Wesley. And to all our audience here tonight, we we'll hope to see you again in our next Facebook Live session, which will be next Wednesday. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Wesley. And thank you all. Good night. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you for your time. And uh, we have Haley right there. And uh, so thanks. And I uh, hope to see you again. Keep in touch. Right, and bye. Uh, yeah, bye. Ready?